Hello, I'm Scott Advantage with ITW Dynetech. Today we're going to demonstrate installation and general maintenance procedures for the next generation Dynamelt S adhesive supply unit. Today we'll start with the power cord installation. Be sure you wear your proper PPE and that you follow your company policy for lockout tagout. To determine the proper gauge size and wiring diagram, you'll find in your startup kit this wattage calculation chart. This will help you determine what gauge wire and your proper insulation schematic. First we'll start, you want to make sure that the unit is in the off position and with a, fill, with a flathead screwdriver you'll want to open up the main cabinet door and inside you'll then locate the power switch. On the power switch there's a small cover and you'll want to remove that using the Phillips head screwdriver. Once you've removed that just set that off to the side. You'll then want to loosen the clamps on your strain relief. You get your power cord and you will feed it through the strain relief. end up into the cabinet. You'll take your first wire and you'll attach it to the top terminal of the power switch. Be sure to check to make sure the wire is secure. And then you'll proceed to install the second wire. And again, check to make sure your wire is secure. Once you have those installed, you'll take the ground wire and you'll want to install it on the ground lug on the base of the unit. And you'll tighten that with a flathead screwdriver. And again, check to make sure it's secure. You will then want to reinstall the copper plate. Once that's secure, you can close the cabinet door. Then want to tighten down your strain lately. And the power cord installation is complete. General preventive maintenance is important to helping your ASU run smoothly and efficiently. We will now demonstrate primary filter change out for the next generation Dynamelt S. Remember to wear the proper PPE and to follow your company's safety procedures and policies. To perform this procedure, the hot melt unit must be at full operating temperature. Be sure you turn off the motor or disconnect the air to the piston pump. First, we will purge the adhesive pressure out of the adhesive manifold. We can do this by turning the purge valve with a 5 mm Allen wrench. Once you open up the purge valve, adhesive should flow from the purge valve to the drip tray. Once all the pressure has been alleviated, you can re-tighten down the purge valve. We can now proceed to removing the filter. With a 1 inch wrench or 25 millimeter wrench, you can loosen the filter nut and pull the filter and filter nut assembly out. Once you remove the filter and filter nut assembly from the manifold, you can take your one inch wrench 
and your three quarter inch or 19 millimeter wrench and remove the filter from the filter nut. Once you've removed the filter from the filter nut, you will want to replace the O-rings, the new O-rings that are supplied with the filter kit. Once you remove the O-rings, it's important that you clean the filter nut from any residue before applying the new filter uh, O-rings. When installing the new O-rings, be sure to use the proper lubricant. Once you have the new O-rings in place, you can now attach the new filter to the filter nut. Remember, it is left-hand thread. Filter and filter nut assembly is now ready to be inserted back into the nut. Tighten the nut down snugly to 10 foot pounds. Retighten your purge valve, and the filter replacement is now complete. Now we will cover procedures for replacing common parts. Don't forget proper PPE and to follow your company's safety policies and lockout tagout procedures. We will proceed and demonstrate the gear motor replacement on this 5 liter gear pump unit. First, make sure the unit is in the off position and we will want to go ahead and access the control cabinet. We will want to lift the lid assembly out of the way for clearance to get into the gear motor. And you can do that by pushing this button here on the right hand side underneath the lid. Now we can proceed to the back of the unit to remove the gear pump motor. Now we're looking at the back of the gear pump unit. We'll want to remove the motor access cover. You'll want to disconnect the ground wire from the access cover and lay it over this middle panel for ease of insulation later. Once the cover's been removed, you'll take a 6 millimeter socket drive and you'll want to loosen the mounting bolt. Once the mounting bolt is loose, you'll grab the bracket and the motor assembly and just slide it right on back. You'll want to disconnect your round electrical power cable. And that is the removal of the gear pump motor assembly. Now we'll cover the replacement of the gear pump. For the previous video, we've already opened up the lid and have removed the access cover and have removed the gear motor. This procedure will help you perform the unit operating temperature, so it will be very important that you're wearing the proper PPE during this procedure. First, you'll want to go ahead and relieve any pressure within the manifold by opening up the purge valve at the bottom here of the manifold with a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. That will relieve any excess pressure within the manifold. Once that pressure is being bled off, you can go ahead and shut your purge valve back off again. Next, you'll want with a 3 millimeter Allen wrench, you'll want to remove the pump coupler. Now with the coupler removed, we can now proceed by loosening the four 12 millimeter 
nuts with a socket wrench. Once that's completed, you'll be able to slide the pump right off the studs. Now the pump removal process is completed. Now we'll demonstrate the piston pump removal procedure on the next generation Dynamelt S. Remember to follow your proper PPE and your company's policies for safety and lockout tagout procedures. We're demonstrating this on the Dynamelt S 10 liter piston pump unit. First, you'll want to make sure that the unit is up to operating temperature. Once it's operating temperature, you can turn unit off and remove or turn off the air supply to the back of the unit. Once you've done that, you'll want to relieve any residual pressure that's in the manifold. So with a 5, allen, five millimeter Allen wrench, you'll want to go ahead and relieve the pressure. The residual pressure should bleed out at the bottom of the manifold onto the drip tray. Once that residual pressure has been relieved, you can go ahead and retighten the purge valve. Once you've removed that pressure, you can go ahead with a Phillips head screwdriver and remove this cover bracket. Once you remove the cover bracket, go ahead and disconnect the 24 volt power supply cable and your airline to the piston pump. With the same 5 millimeter Allen wrench, you'll want to remove the three mounting bolts. Once the three Allen bolts are loose, you'll be able to slide the piston pump right out of the manifold. That is the demonstration for moving the piston pump 